all aboard! Hello everybody, I'm Dirchbridge here at Pokemon News, and welcome back to Nintendo Hype Train. Um, now you guys saw the things, so you know it's a Nintendo Hype Train, you know what this one's about, because I always give you the thumbnail and the title. No, I don't keep it a secret what these are about. So, I'm gonna dive into it, I tend to do the intros for a bit too long on these, uh, without revealing what the game is. Uh, even though it's already revealed to you. Uh, the game in this case is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Um, why haven't I done a Nintendo hype train on this before? Wow, that was kind of a hard sentence to get out, but I got it out. Got it out for you guys. <laughs> but, um, the reason I haven't done one of these on Breath of the Wild yet is... I don't know why, but I never thought to do it. You know, when Breath of the Wild was officially announced during E3... Uh, or not officially announced, but... I mean, like, shown off and, and given its title and, and all that. I guess that's kind of an announcement, but it had already been announced back in, like, what, 2014? Um, but regardless, like, I didn't do it back then. I, I don't really know why. I was extremely excited then. I might have been just kind of out of my mind at the time. But yeah, um, this is, you know, finally happening, and... <laughs> Uh, quickly, or not, not quickly enough, really. Um, I mean, this video is going to be outdated in less than a month at this point. Um, because Breath of the Wild comes out as a launch title on the Switch. Unlike any of the other games I've covered so far for the Switch, um, this one's a launch title. The other ones are coming up within the coming weeks and months after the launch. Um, but this one is certain to be, you know, March 3rd uh, on Wii U and Switch. Um, so, you know, it's just like, I know you guys saw this coming, um, but you probably a bit dis probably a bit disheartened that I hadn't actually done one yet on Breath of the Wild, even though I was clearly excited about it, I mean, uh, Trollologram was excited about it, um, I believe both of us have done reactions to Breath of the Wild trailers? Maybe just him? I think just... I think Jacob's the only one who's done the reaction to Breath of the Wild. I did Pokemon reactions mainly. Um, <laughs> uh, I remember a lovely comment on that one about uh, um, how dumb he is. I'm like, you don't get to say that. That's my right. I know him. I am his friend. I can call him dumb. You cannot. He's not being dumb. He had just not seen anything about it, and so it was all fresh, all new, and all exciting. But anyways, that's enough of defending that video. I need to really get on with this one. Um, so, the biggest thing, literally, about Breath of the Wild is the world. It is absolutely massive. It's not the biggest map that's been in any game. Um, like, you know, there's Daisy with a 100 plus uh, square kilometer map. Xenoblade Chronicles X has a 200 plus uh, kilometer map, I believe but you run really fast and you have skulls and stuff, so that doesn't really count. Um, but, you know, the world is that massive. So, Breath of the Wild's map is just over 60, if I remember correctly. It's like 61, 62, somewhere in there, uh, square kilometers. Um, which is over 23 square miles. That is a really big area. Um, and, you know... It's a whole lot bigger than Skyrim, which came in roughly at about 40 square kilometers, which is about 15 square miles. So it's it's a decent chunk larger. It's what about a third larger? Yeah, no, it's 50 percent larger than uh, Skyrim's roughly. Yeah, I don't know why I said a third. Yeah, it's about about a a 50 percent increase. I, th I was thinking a third because. 40 is two-thirds of 60, but no, uh, at that point it's a 50% increase on, on Skyrim, so it's a big world, basically is all I'm trying to get out. Um, it is a big, big world with lots of stuff. Um, er, like, Skyrim seems really massive, um, and so, you know, Breath of the Wild, you know, has to be just immense when you play it, like... I mean, it's a lucky thing that they have fast travel on that, because fast travel was necessary in Skyrim. It could have been necessary in Xenoblade Chronicles X, um, 
but you can get across the world in a scout pretty quick. Um, on foot, though, there's no no fast way. I wouldn't. Ha I would hate to run in Zombie Chronicles X from n New LA to Caldros on foot. That is something I fly to in a scale for five minutes if I want to fly there in a scale for five minutes. Normally, I'll just quick travel. And that's the big thing is because we have quick travel in Breath of the Wild, the large world is easier to traverse, um, you know, after you've explored. <laughs> um, but that's enough about the world for now. Let's get into what makes it kind of unique. Um, and like the ways it's deviating from the standard Zelda formula. So the first way is the increased control of Link. Like back in the original games, like, you know, your control of Link, in 3D games at least, I'm not going to talk about 2D games and relate them to Breath of the Wild, that's kind of a hard thing to do outside of storylines. Um, but if you look at the past Zelda games, you know, you jumped when you ran at a ledge. Um, you climbed ladders and walls that were clearly climbable, like you did the, all of that. You got what you got. And in Skyward Sword, you could upgrade some of what you got. And I think uh, Twilight Princess might have had a couple upgrade things. I can't really remember, um, like your tunics and stuff you bought or, or you know, got um, through plot devices in the story. And so that's how most of the upgrades came in Twilight Princess. Skyward Sword, you kind of had like this upgrade system. You collect, uh, you know, random drops, and you would use that to upgrade your shields and your weapons and whatnot. And basically everything but the sword was upgraded that way. Uh, and you know that's all kind of changed now. Like if you look at Breath of the Wild, you can jump at the push of a button. You can climb almost anything and you can and that just uses stamina which you get and you can get upgrades to. Which is something Skyward Sword did not do. Skyward Sword very specifically paced things that use stamina so that you would get there either with just under your maximum stamina or just at using up the maximum stamina. Um, they had like stamina fruits scattered around. Breath of the Wild does not do that. You just climb and you know you can upgrade your stamina as you progress throughout the game and uh, I'm guessing it has something to do with some of the drops you might get and stuff and, and you craft. Uh, a stamina increasing item, or maybe it's even a reward you get from like a shrine or something like that, or even a series of shrines. Um, but outside of how you control Link, as I said, you know, before you had very limited control of the gear Link has. In this, you can change your gear, you can change your weapons. Um, outside of just this sword is stronger than this one, but I can still go back to that sword if I want to. Um, kind of logic, like you can um, you can switch to a, a giant axe, like the woodcutter's axe, or you can switch to a, a bacoblin's club, or a spear. You know, it, it's very much like Wind Waker in that sense, but it's not like Wind Waker where you're just holding the item and, and using it, um, but like you couldn't take it out of a room, or you know, you could still throw it and stuff like that and just kind of clatter against the ground, Breath of the Wild takes it and makes it so that your gear is temporary. It will break over time. Um, if you throw it at an enemy and hit them, I'm pretty sure it's guaranteed to break it. Um, it has a really cool animation when it breaks, too. But yeah, it's like changing your gear. Like it, Outside of just weaponry and stuff, you can change your outfit into warmer clothes and, and lighter clothes so that you don't get too hot. And like. There is a lot of customization there. I mean, uh, one of the things that was announced before I even wrote the outline for this episode, or not before, sorry, after I wrote the outline to this episode, um, it was just announced today or yesterday, I don't remember exactly which, I think it was today, um, is that Breath of the Wild will have a DLC thing where it's a $20 uh, season pass. They call it the expansion pass. If you get that, there's a special... Um, shirt that you can get in game that I believe has has the Switch logo. I'm not sure if the Wii U version will have the Switch logo or just a generic uh, Nintendo one. It would probably be a bit weird if it was the Switch. I mean, I might have misread it and it's actually just a Nintendo shirt, 
Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was the Switch. And, you know, that... I honestly... I really want that, if only to do a run basically just in that shirt. Like, go immediately, get that shirt, and go fight Ganon. You know, those types of runs, you know? That's like, if that's the only time I'd ever use it, um, that would be it. Um, and they had me sort of that in the advent of a harder difficulty mode, something I'm guessing along the lines of like the Master Quest and, and stuff like that. Um, but I'll get to some of that a bit later. Um, I want to kind of get back to some of the differences between this game and, and past games. Um, so there's more nature in Breath of the Wild, and you might be like, what do you mean by more nature? Which is, that's very vague. It is vague. Um, but if you look at Breath of the Wild, there's a lot more types of animals, a lot more types of plants, and a lot more times of like types of, of, of fungi. Like, there's so much life everywhere. You know, and, and it's really odd when you see the like a screenshot here or there, or a, or a, a passing glam, or glamps? A passing glimpse of a, of a location in a trailer that just doesn't have an animal or doesn't have a plant. It's just, it's really odd and disconcerting because it's such a, like, a lively world. Like, they showed off the deer in, in, in one of the concept art things uh, they've been releasing through, like, Facebook and stuff. Uh, and they're, like, pointing out, like, the deer's concept art and stuff like that. And there's boars and there's wild horses. You know, there's just, there's ducks, <laughs> like, there's so many things, it's such a populated, densely packed world. You know, it's, it's crazy how much life they've just packed into this. Outside of just enemies, there's just animals. And that was not something that was in many Zelda games, like, there were like butterflies and birds, but you didn't get things like deer and, and boar. Uh, I think there's foxes that were somewhere in in one of the trailers. He was like, you don't get that in normal Zelda games, or even horses. Horses are everywhere in Zelda, but there's none in the wild. They're all in ranches and in stables, and so that's the only places you ever see them. It's like, where are they getting these horses? This game kind of gives us the chance to see where they're getting the horses, um, outside of you know breeding them, you know, on ranches. Uh, but if you look at uh, like a lot of the trailers and artwork and stuff, there's a lot of returning characters. Um, not, I, I shouldn't say a lot of returning characters, but there's some returning characters and presumably a lot of, uh, of returning characters, judging by the ones that they've chosen so far. Um, the returning characters we got so far are like Beetle and the Old Man. Uh, as, you know, returning characters like Beetle is so familiar, and the old man is kind of supposed to be the old man from the original Legend of Zelda, in a sense. Um, you know, you might theorize maybe he's the king of Hyrule and, and stuff like that as well, so it could be kind of like the return of uh, King Daphne Snow Hansen Hyrule. And that's not really confirmed, that's just kind of like some rumors that people have, you know, talked about here and there. But that's, you know, it's so exciting to see the characters returning. Like, Beale has completely different clothing than ever. He's a bit taller than he usually is. But it's really cool to see him return. And I'm excited to see what other characters are going to be returning. Now, outside of returning characters, there's a lot of new ones. There's, uh, I can't remember his name. Um, he is a Rito. He's a parrot like Rito. And he has a, an accordion. He's a bard of sorts. And he gives you hints to different places. I'm really blanking on his name right now, but. I probably should have put that into the outline, <laughs> but he's super cool looking, and it's just a really clever way to help people who are having trouble navigating through the game, you know, just give them a, a bard who gives you a riddle and says, you know, you know, there's, you know, this and this area, but through a, a song, and it, it's, it's just, it's a really cool plot device, it kind of reminds me of, like, um, some of the fortune tellers in past games, uh, and, and that's that's just cool to me. Um, there's also 
uh, the other Rito character, who I believe he had a bow. Um, I'm assuming he's a he. And there's nothing suggesting that it's not a he, but you know, it could be a, a female Rito. Um, but we've got the new Goron guy. Uh, and I love the Goron guy. His only quote that we know so far is, Here it comes. And then there's him patting Link on the back. But I already love him. I love him so much. And he's a companion. And he's awesome. There's also a Zora character who, from what I've heard in some like interviews and stuff, her age isn't quite known. Um... She's either very young or a teenager or something, and I don't know why. There's pro they're probably going to explain some of that in the actual game and uh, explain it better um, than you know the, the the interviewers might have written it down. Um, but it, you know, it's it's really cool to see you know so many characters. And the most interesting thing to me is the fact that there's Zora and and Rito in the same world. Like, the Zoras and the Rito are the same people. Wind Waker tells us this. That the Zoras had to flee the oceans because they were populated by monsters who would kill them. And then Valu, uh, or his ancestor, or whatever you want to say, his past incarnation or something, came to the rescue giving them feathers rather than Jabu Jabu scales. And that allowed them to grow feathers and wings and take flight. And then they kind of started to look more and more like they were being influenced by this. It wasn't necessarily a lot like a, a normal form of evolution, but rather a guided sense by who their guardian deity was. Um, and, and so that's kind of like a really cool thing about the Rio was that they were Zoras, and now they're bird people. But yet now we have the Rito and the Zoras in the same world, and so I'm really curious as to how that works. Does that mean that Valu, or a character like Valu, is going to be in the game um, with the Rito? Or that a character like Jabu Jabu, or Jaboom, is uh, going to be there for the Zoras, you know? And that they're kind of two separate people now because some went back or something, or some went, you know, to... Valu, and it, it, like, maybe this game takes place before Wind Waker or something like that, or it takes place after, and you don't know. But it's really interesting to me that there's kind of this possible, like, this possible plot between the Zora and the Rito, um, within the game. Now, getting to plot, and, it, <laughs> and the story of the game... The biggest thing about the game is we know, one, we know very little about the story, so I'm not going to really talk much about it, because there's not much that I know, at least. I've been kind of avoiding story spoilers. Um, I've gotten a few here and there, but I've been generally trying to lay low on story spoilers. Um, man, lots of door shutting today. It is, it is an oddly active night in door shutting. Uh, that's a lot of audio editing for me. But, anyways, back to the story of the game. The biggest change to the story that we know um, in Breath of the Wild versus past Zelda games is that there are a lot of voice acting bits here and there. There's All the cutscenes are, are fully voice acted. Um, some of the dialogue in the game, you know, is very traditional Zelda like her. Her? Like, stuff like that. Um, but it would actually be in your language rather than in Hylian or something like that, and it'd be like, huh? And, and like, and things like that, like, I, like, just random Hylian, which is similar to Japanese, but it's not Japanese at all. It doesn't make sense in Japanese, exactly. Um, but yeah, it, it, it it's... It's cool to see that voice acting is coming to the game in, in such a big way. Um, and some of it seems rather intense, like what, <laughs> the infamous scene um, and or famous scene, depending on which voice acting you're watching, uh, is the scene with Zelda crying. Everyone is upset that the English dub, she doesn't seem to be crying hard enough, and that honestly might lead to them redubbing it, 
you know, calling the voice actor back to to fix that up. Um, maybe get a better cry out of it so that it doesn't offend people. I don't know why it does. The Japanese one, a lot of people are like, it feels so heartfelt and, and genuine. It's like... Some people felt it was too extreme, though, and... Yeah. It, it's a scene that is, depending on which language, like, France was pretty good. Russia was okay. You know, all the different uh, languages that the game is in, you know, some of them were really good, some of them weren't as good. It's like, it's gonna be like that for everything in the games. It's not gonna be like, they're all just these amazing scenes. Like, no, they're gonna have varied performances across the games. Maybe the American uh, voice actress is for Zelda does really well in one scene and really bad in another, and that's actually been kind of shown with some of the dialogue that she's had being just really good and well performed, and then just the crying scene wasn't that good. But regardless of uh, controversy over the voice acting, it's really cool to see it there. Um, so one of the things that you know you kind of have to mention about a game like this is how does it perform especially on the switch we've seen how it performs on the wii u and there's a lot of frame like a uh, frame rate drops um it runs at 720p 30 fps at best um you know the draw distance isn't that crazy i mean it's a beautiful game everyone was remarking about how beautiful it was before the switch was announced or before the yeah before the switch was announced and before the the switch gameplay was announced, everyone was super excited and in love with it. There's nothing wrong if you want to play the, the Wii U version. I know it's performance to 72030, but if you find that okay, and if you find some of the draw distance difficulties, you know, okay, then that's fine. Um, the, the demo on the Switch was running at 900p 30fps uh, on the TV, 720p 30 undocked. Um, and Nintendo did state that it, uh, it does run at 900p30 when docked, uh, in, a, in an interview after that. Um, and... The, the biggest difference, really... I really... One of the biggest things that people were talking about is that it might have been, um the Wii U version uh, of sorts, or like an older version more similar to the current Wii U version that was running on the Switch. Um, but I don't know if that's true. I feel like the demo is, is definitely on the Switch. I don't see why they would use the current Wii U version to run on the Switch. Um, it might not be the finalized Switch version, so it might run smoother in the final version, for all we know. But I mean, the, the final date is coming very close. So unless they really used an old, uh, an old, you know, version of the game for the demo, then of course things are going to be kind of odd. Um, and we also haven't really had more recent comparison shots with the Wii U and stuff. So the performance differences, eh, they're debatable. Um, Some of the biggest differences, though, in performance between the Wii U and the Switch um, is supposedly how, when undocked, the Switch runs better because it's running 720p30, um, but using most of the same processing power. Um, I don't really. I guess the uh, the rest of the you know dock was going to getting it to 900p30 and had some issues with that, at least in the version that was there, but. You know, if the undocked version is better, you know that's kind of that's kind of surprising, but you know that's really cool because that means that you have a better experience when you take it on the go. Um, at least for the loss of of, of some uh, resolution. But if you look at you know the other differences between the Wii U and the Switch version outside of performance, you've got portability. The Wii U one is a lot less portable. Now, I will never say that the Wii U is not a portable system. I have brought it places. It's easier and more portable than any other console right now. I 
all I need is a power cable, a gamepad, and its charger. And I can play my Wii U anywhere with AC outlets. I can even play multiplayer in games like Super Smash Bros. and Mario Kart and stuff like that by just bringing another controller with me. I could take my Wii U really anywhere I wanted and play. It is the most portable system that we currently have. Now there are ways to make other systems portable, but uh, they're really difficult in some cases and just awkward to get to work right. Some of them requiring actual technical workarounds. Um, but some of the other bigger differences is um, there's HD rumble for the Switch version. The Wii U version, of course, does not have HD rumble. I'm really curious what the HD rumble ver uh, on the Switch version is going to be like. Um, just because it's kind of... It's been interesting to me this whole time when, whenever they talk about... HD Rumble. I'm like, I want to try that. I want to figure out what it's like. I want to know what this is. Um, you know, it's like, it's such an odd and new concept. Um, but outside of that, uh, if you get the Wii U version when playing on the physical copy, you have a 3 gigabyte download. So if you don't have an extra 3 gigabytes of space on your Wii U, you're going to have to make room. That's just the way it is. And also, the 3 gigabyte download might require more than 3 gigabytes. Um, I know that Xenoblade Chronicles X, the um, uh, packs to increase performance uh, and load time, or in, and decrease load times, they usually say, you know, it needs twice as much. One of the packs is about 17. 100 megabytes, but requires about 7,000 megabytes for it to uh, download and install it. So unless they actually do have it be exactly a 3 gigabyte requirement for the Wii U version's physical copy, then, you know, so be it, it's, it's 3 gigabytes. Um, you know, that's how it's going to be, but if it is higher, that's just kind of rough. Um, Especially if you have a lot of games that are digital that you like to play. Um, now some of the other differences though uh, between the Switch and the Wii U is that the sound effects on the Switch are better at least when docked. That I've heard that it's when docked, I don't know if undocked it's still going to have better sound effects or if it's going to have the same sound effects. And how valuable the different sound effects are going to be to you. Um, and also, uh, lighting on the Switch looks a bit better, the shadows are smoother, um, and that's really about it. You know, the shadows are smoother and better animated. But that's that's really all the differences that I know so far between the Wii U and the Switch version. Their goal is to keep them pretty dang identical, so I would be very surprised if they're not. I guess uh, some of the other differences really are. Um, that with the Switch version, if you play with a Switch Pro controller, you know, or the Joy-Con separate from the actual, you know, console itself from the actual Switch, you still have um, the gyro controls, unlike the Wii U where you have to be playing on the gamepad to use the gyro. Um, so that's, I guess that's kind of a difference of, of sorts. Um, but I do want to get to the DLC and touch on that a little bit more. Um, it's about $20 uh, for the expansion pass. And it is on both the Wii U and the Switch, which is the nice thing. They're not excluding anything. They've already said they are identical. You will not miss out on anything. Um, one of the expansions is, I believe, uh, the Cave of Trials. Uh, Cave of Trials. Um, some new treasure chests um, and a harder difficulty and then there's another one that's um, a new story from what I heard. Now I don't know if that's also the, the, the new difficulty and the new story are one and the same where it's basically a Master Quest style thing where playing through the story is completely different than playing through the story of the other one. But that is an interesting, an interesting thing to throw in to the DLC. Um, but yeah, that's, that's really, that's really everything. I have spent 30 minutes here 
um, in my dorm at 9 o'clock. <laughs> it is 9.36 right now at night on Valentine's Day. And I'm a bit exhausted, if you couldn't tell. Um, but I really wanted to get this out. Uh, and so, I mean, it's not, it's definitely not up for you guys on Valentine's Day. There's no way I'm editing this tonight. But it is up for you guys before the release of the game, at least. Um, but anyways, I hope you guys are all excited for Breath of the Wild. Tell me what you're most excited about in the comments below. Um, you know, do something nice like that. Uh, also, if you know my personal channel um, at all, you know, it's just Dirch Birch. I'm Dirch Birch of Pokemon News. My personal channel is just Dirch Birch of Dirch Birch. Um, so if you look up Dirch Birch on YouTube, you should find it. It'll probably try to autocorrect it to, uh, I think it's, a uh, Dirch Brook, which is a, a German word. I don't know what it means. Um, but, uh, just make sure that it's searching for actually Dirch Birch, and, and you should find it, uh, pretty, pretty easily, uh, that way. Uh, I plan, I'm not going to be doing a Let's Play series of it, um, of Breath of the Wild, at least. Um, I've kind of thought that out quite a bit. No way I'm doing a Let's Play of it. But I'm definitely going to be playing it on the channel, and I was kind of debating between whether I should do Twitch streams or YouTube streams, um, but YouTube has a, a cool thing where you can donate to have a comment um, more visible to me, um, and it could be any sum of money, and basically if someone outbids your comment, that's the only time it's going to get replaced. Um, or actually, I don't even think if someone outbids it, it gets replaced. It's just the amount of money you pay is, the, is how long it's up to increase my awareness of it. Um, and I think that sounds really cool. I want to figure out how to set that up on on YouTube's uh, live streams and, and see about that. Um, I'll still probably be doing at least, you know, once weekly Twitch streams, but I feel like Breath of the Wild... Uh, YouTube streams would probably be what I, I wind up doing. But, uh, I should probably start getting to sleep soon. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that's really everything I've got for you guys. Um, you know, once again, leave any comments about what you're excited about, uh, Breath of the Wild, uh, down below. And, uh, yeah. It's the end of this one. Thanks for watching, Ling. I hope you love Disc. Enjoy the outro. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of loopy right now. I'm surprisingly exhausted after this. It's strange. You guys are like vampires. But I love you. And what type of... What type of vampire do people love? I don't know. I don't want to say Twilight because no one likes Twilight anymore. Besides, I never really liked Twilight, so... I don't know. But I, you guys are vampires that I love. There you go. You sucked all the blood. Or you sucked all the energy out of my body. But all the blood is in my heart. For you guys. This is such a weird thing for me to say. Wow. You can tell how exhausted I am. So bye. That's it. I'm cutting myself off here. Right now. I am not continuing this. Insanity. Okay, bye. Thanks for watching our video. If you want to check out a video recommended for you, click the thumbnail on the left. If you want to check out our most recent video, click the thumbnail on the right. We post a lot more on Facebook and Google+, so be sure to check us out there. Links are in the description below.